guys in this video I'll be talking about how to create a railway database. This is only the backend services of the railway database and when combined with some frontend services it would serve as an excellent application. The Department of Railways is a classic example of where databases can be used and hence it's a really good topic as a project for your undergraduate DBMS course. The railway database is a very huge database with various functionalities. In this project I have taken some of the important functionalities and I have implemented it. So before we get started with the database, we need to know about the ER diagram or the Entity Relational Diagram. The ER diagram or the Entity Relational Diagram, which is a popular high-level conceptual diagram which determines the design of the database along with the concepts. In my railway database, I have five entities, that is the train, station, tickets, passenger, user and one weak entity, that is the train status. The user table contains all the details of all the people who have registered in that site. The passenger is all the details of those passengers who have actually booked a ticket. The train consists of all the details of, the, of that particular train, with train number being the primary key. Station contains all the stations that are available in the entire railway database. So. I have indicated the double the relations are indicated by a diamond that is passenger books a ticket and a user can cancel a ticket. A station has a source or each ticket has a source and a destination and each train has a stops at, starts at and reaches a particular station. The double lines indicate that they are total dependency, a total participation and the and the weak, the double box line indicates a weak dependency, which does not have any primary key. The primary keys are indicated by an underlying line in that attribute. So after doing all the ER diagram and setting all your attributes, we can now go to the next step, that is the conceptual design. So what is the conceptual schema? The conceptual schema of the database is it makes our life easy in actual implementation of the database. So while you do this, you have various rules and after normalization, so um, you have to follow all the rules of normalization after you get the complete ER diagram. So this is my ER diagram for my railway database. So now let's get started. Well, I'm on my Mac and I have been using Docker to run my Azure Data Studio. You can use various data languages like um, various structural query languages like MySQL, MSSQL, PostgreSQL or Oracle SQL. I in my project have used MSSQL and since it's a Windows based environment I have to run it in my Docker container. So to run all my uh, to run my Docker, I have to use these following commands to make sure that your MSQL is up and running in the Docker container. You can get this dialog box. If this is shown, that means your Docker container is completely well and running. All right, so let's get started. I have used Azure Data Studio to implement all my data base. So I have to do my connection, so I have to create a connection and I'm going to connect it and I, once I connect it, I can actually see that my database has been connected which is a green globule over here. I have already implemented the structure of the tables of the database which can be seen over here. So to see if it's actually implemented, you can see that all the tables have been created which was actually shown in the ER diagram or the conceptual design. As I've already explained you all the things, you can see that there are additional tables over here that's books, cancels, reaches at, etc. So I'll just give you a brief description of what each table actually does. I've already given you the description about the user, train. So what does the train stats do? So train stats consist of information like the number of seats available in that train. So every time you book a train, a ticket, in that particular train, the number of seats should decrease and the base fare should also increase. So those are handled by triggers which I'll be discussing later in this video. 
The start set and stop set station tells the num the trains where the train stops and starts at. Reaches tells when the train has reached that particular station along with the time. So now we come to the passengers table. Every time you book a ticket in the passengers table, you automatically go to you automatically create an account or a, ta a row in this books table. And if you cancel or delete a record in the passengers table, well, you have cancelled the ticket. It's assumed that you have cancelled the ticket and you automatically have a row entered in the cancel ticket. All this has been handled by triggers, which I'll be discussing later. All right, so now we have, since we have done all the DDL commands and I have some check constraints, which I actually want to see whether the user ID, the PID, age are all greater than zero because I don't have a negative age, do I? <laughs> so then uh, these are all the constraints that I actually have and uh, I have used on the constraint where I have checked the mobile numbers should all be 10 digits and they should all be letters, uh, sorry, numbers. Okay, so now let's go to the inserting of values. So whenever you enter a database, it's assumed that you have all these values entered. That is, it's assumed that you have already created an account in that particular site. So I've entered all the values in the user. It is assumed that the trains details have also been entered by the railway officials along with the start sat, stop sat and reaches. So with this being said, let us look at the various database, various tables in this. So when I'm running it, you can see that the values that I've actually entered in this has actually been updated in my database. Okay, so uh, I have uh, also shown my train uh, ticket, passenger, cancel and books, which has not yet been entered and I will be showing you how to do it. All right, so, um, so let's go to the, let's start inserting values in the ticket table. So, okay, so over here I have few triggers that are actually helping me indicate how, how to increase and decrease the values in the table. So I'll just give you a brief update. So before, let us be safe that there is nothing in the table and I'm updating all the values and train stats to be four number of seats number of AC seats and non AC seats to be four and the status to be confirmed just to make sure that I have actually been able to convey what I actually want to show you through the trigger so um, let's look at it so as you can see that the a ticket is null it does not have any values entered and all my train ID that's each train has only four AC seats and four non AC seats with a base fare of as shown over here all right so um, and also you can see that there's a fare over here so what actually my trigger is doing is that every time you select a AC seat, a certain amount of money is being added to the base fare and is being added to the record over here. And every time you book a ticket in a non-AC seat, then the base fare would be added with an additional 50 rupees and would be shown in the fare. So this has been handled by triggers and also um, every time you book a ticket, your number of AC seat count also should decrease. So these are some important values that you need to take care. So um, let's get started. So when I'm first inserting a value, so let's say I insert a value and it was, uh, and when I select it, okay, so you can see that ticket number one of user ID one and his status was confirmed so um, and he has booked a ticket in train number one triple zero one and one triple zero one has actually had four seats in the beginning if you remember and had a base fare of 1500 but you can see that now the fare has increased to 1700 with the status being confirmed similarly when i add more three seats and we are wondering 
So over here you can see that all of them have booked train number. All of book all of them have booked an AC seat in train number one triple zero one, and now the AC seat count has been decreased to zero. But everyone has had the same choices, and hence their base fare is one thousand seven hundred. All right. So now let's in insert another value of the same choice and see what happens. Well, you see, now the AC seat count was already zero and hence we could not give him a seat in that particular choice and hence status is not confirmed and his fare is zero since he has not been able to book it. So in this you could have actually set another trigger to actually put the, all these records in the waiting list. But in this project I have not done that but you could do it. That's a future option for you. Alright, so similarly let me insert few values in the non-AC seat and uh, when I select it so you can see that they have booked uh, AC or non-AC seat N stands for non-AC and his base fare he booked a ticket in 1002 and the base fare was 1000 and an additional 500 rupees has been added so it actually tells you that an additional 500 rupees has actually been added so um, with this being said I would like to show you the triggers that are actually helping me so what do you think the trigger should be applicable to the ticket column right so um, every time you check the availability so this is my trigger so every time you're checking the availability it's inserting a trigger so every time you're inserting a value into the trigger I have checked whether the option is an AC seat and correspondingly I've set the status to not confirmed if the number of seat is less than zero. These are all my local variables and the fare has been updated to an additional 200 rupees if it's an AC seat and an additional 50 rupees if it's a non-AC seat. Well how to see if the trigger actually exists? Well over here in the side panel you can see that there is something called triggers. Right click it and you have two triggers that's a check avail trigger and the ticket cancel trigger. Alright, so now since I've actually told you how this actually works, and this is a very small example, I would also like to show you another trigger that I've actually implemented and that is my passenger's trigger. So to be on the safe side, I've to let me just run this and I have no values and when you can see over here, you can see that they none of them have any values. Now when I insert two values and now we, what I what in the previous explanation that I've given I've actually told you that every time you insert a value into the passengers table it should correspondingly insert a row or record into the books table. So that is again handled by my trigger and you can see that the ticket ID along with the PID that's a ticket ID along with the PID has been entered into the books table whereas the cancel table is still null because we have not yet deleted any record from the passengers table. Well, what if I want to delete in the entire record from the passengers table? Well, you could do that. So I just say delete from passengers and now you can see. So here you go. So there's no record in the passengers table where the books table is containing all the logs of all the people who have actually booked a ticket. Where's the cancel tickle? You can see that the two values that were actually supposed to book a ticket has cancelled a ticket, so hence I have entered the record into the cancel table. So just for clear justification, the books on the cancel table is containing all the logs that the pe person has booked or cancelled, okay? It doesn't tell you that whether that ticket has been confirmed or not confirmed because that has been actually told in the ticket column. Okay, so and uh, yes, uh, now since it's been cancelled, you can see that all uh, when I so I actually said you right the status should be confirmed or not confirmed. So you can see that the status of ticket number one, which was actually cancelled, has been set to status X. His non AC seat has also become X and his pair has become zero. And also you can see that earlier there was zero seats in the train ID so that again has been increased to one so there is now one seat that has been available. If you had a waiting list column you could ac actually make this person that is the user ID 5 to actually get a ticket 
or book a ticket. So that can be handled in, under the trigger, which is beyond the scope of this video. I would like to show you the triggers that I've actually been using to handle all of this. So whenever you're cancelling a trigger, so you can see that I'm setting the status to X where ticket ID and ticket number is being set to ticket ID is being equal to ticket number which is actually my foreign key reference. Well, so that's it for this video. Hope you like it. Thank you.